Hello everyone. Welcome to Yellow Pages Nursing. In today's video, we will be discussing about subglottic suctioning. Before entering into the session, if you have not subscribed our channel, please subscribe our channel and do not forget to hit the bell icon to receive instant notifications. Let's get into the topic. What do we mean by subglottic suction? Subglottic suctioning is a method of removing oropharyngeal secretions from above the cuff of the endotracheal or tracheostomy tube. When we look at this image here, there is oropharyngeal secretions above the cuff. The endotracheal tube prevents glottic closure. As a result, the patient is unable to cuff and remove the secretions in a natural way. Hence, there is accumulation or pooling of oropharyngeal secretions above the endotracheal tube cuff and this might lead to aspiration later. Moreover, if the endotracheal tube cuff pressure is not adequate, the secretions may slip down into trachea and this might lead to ventilator-associated pneumonia otherwise called WAP. And hence, subglottic suction is included as one of the intervention in WAP bundle. Now, why is subglottic suction needed? In order to prevent ventilator associated pneumonia that is WAP and to reduce the ventilator days. During mechanical ventilation, secretions from the upper respiratory tract accumulate above the endotracheal tube cuff. Studies have shown that these secretions can seep past the cuff into the lower tract causing pneumonia. For whom do we need to do subglottic suction? Subglottic suction is indicated in patients requiring mechanical ventilation for more than 72 hours. And moreover, when mechanical ventilation is needed for more than 72 hours, the endotracheal tube should have a subglottic suction line. Next, when do we do subglottic suction? Aspirate the subglottic port every 2 to 4 hours using a 5 ml syringe. If the secretion is less than 5 ml, then the aspiration can done every 4 hours. And if the secretion is more than 5 ml, then the aspiration can be done every 2 hours. Then subglottic suction is done before extubation and before positioning the patient. And furthermore, before deflating the endotracheal tube cuff. Now, how is subglottic suction done? There are many ways how we perform subglottic suction. Manual subglottic suctioning, continuous or intermittent subglottic suction, automated intermittent subglottic suctioning. Now, before discussing about manual subglottic suctioning, you should be aware about the ET tube parts. Now, when we look at this image, the patient is intubated with an ET tube and the cuff is inflated. Just above the cuff, there is an opening which we call as evacuation port in order to suction the secretions. The oropharyngeal secretions are accumulated above the cuff and there is pilot balloon for inflating the cuff. There are two lines, one is for inflating the cuff and one is for suctioning the subglottic secretions, which is called as subglottic suction line. Now, what is manual subglottic suctioning? Manual subglottic suctioning involves placing a syringe into the subglottic suction port to aspirate the secretions. As we discussed before, a 5 ml syringe is used at the subglottic port and the secretions are aspirated. Now, automated intermittent subglottic suctioning. An automated intermittent subglottic suction device eliminates the need for manual suctioning of subglottic secretions. It also provides the ability to suction the patient in a closed system to prevent cross-contamination. So this is all about subglottic suctioning. If you find this video useful, please like it and please subscribe it and do not forget to hit the bell icon to receive instant notifications. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.